What's up guys, Blademaster here, you're watching the Wolf of Remus Total War channel and this is a Total War Room 2 online battle replay played between yours truly, Blademaster, and Philip Hader. It's been a while since I've played him. Um, the last time I played him I think was, uh, maybe a, I think it was the uh, Reddit tournament? I'm not sure. Maybe a couple games after that, uh, I'm not sure. Anyways, um, I managed to uh, track him down and uh, we played like three games and this is the first of those three. I think I'll bring all three of them because they were all pretty, pretty cool. Anyways, I've taken Macedon in this game, and he has taken Armenia. And here you can see Macedon's really weird uh, new faction color. So, as Macedon, I've taken uh, three... I've gone with a very different build from what I usually take. I've taken three Thorax, sword, uh, thor thorax Pikemen and uh, three Levy Pikemen. So, the Thorax Swords are going to be... Uh, sorry, Thorax Pikes are going to be kept in the center. And the Pikes are going to... The Levy Pikes are going to be on my sides. And then I've brought three mercenary Cretan archers and two mercenary Rorian slingers. Finally, I've brought a couple of Tureo spears and uh, two royal peltas, and finally two Thessalian cav. Now, meanwhile, Philippator has brought uh, two uh, horse archers. By uh, he's taken Armenia, so he's taken two horse archers, and uh, brought one royal cataphract and one eastern cataphract on either flank. So very powerful cavalry force. And uh, besides that, he's brought a total of five Eastern Archers, who should be inferior to my... I mean, they should definitely be inferior to my uh, Skirmishers. Finally, he's brought a mix of Persian Hoplites. Actually, no, he's brought four uh, Persian Hoplites and one uh, Axeman in the center, and a couple of Cappadocian Cav uh, next to them. Now, right off the bat, he's moving really quickly with his uh, Cataphracts and trying to... Uh, get some decent fla uh, flanking positions and rear positions on my uh, army. I'm forced to be pretty defensive. I chose a very defensive uh, build right from the start. And I have to be uh, wary of them for the entire battle, basically. And I have to use my Thessalians uh, as well as possible. Now, I'm moving up in front because I want to engage his main line as soon as possible. Because that's where I have the advantage. If I can get good shots off with my Cretan archers onto his uh, Persian Hoplites, he should be able to uh, die very easily. Now, I'm getting shots off with my mercenary Rodian Slingers. This is uh, one of my favorite tactics to do. I just press J and uh, instead from facing this way, they have now faced this way. So now they can start attacking his horse archers like you saw them do there. But meanwhile, his, uh, uh, per his Eastern archers are getting great shots onto my Rodian Slingers while their backs are turned to them. So this is a very good move by by uh, uh, Philopater. Now I'm chasing off his Eastern Cataphracts. He doesn't want to engage me even though I don't have good cavalry on my, on my side. And that's because I've got Thoria Spears and Royal Pantis helping out. Who would be right next to him to help out. Now he moves away a bit too late with his uh, one of his Eastern Cataphracts and I've caught them with my Thessalian Cav. But my mercenary Rodian Slingers are getting slaughtered by his Eastern Archers. I'm forced to keep one of them on to, uh, uh, to face this side so that I can kill off his uh, Horse Archers. But they haven't done a great job at that. My Cretan archers should be able to kill them off though, and it's pretty surprising to see them not, not being able to uh, kill them off as soon as, I mean, as easily as I expected them to. But now I'm turning around my Thurea Spears to try and get some shots off onto these Royal Cataphracts. Meanwhile, my Royal Pelters are doing the same thing, and I'm putting them in Shield Wall, because these Royal Cataphracts would, are incredibly strong on the charge. Now, you might notice that I haven't put my guys on, uh, on uh, Pike Phalanx. That's because without Pike Phalanx, they can, they can do this. They can raise their shields up, and that would make them a lot less susceptible to uh, to archer fire. These guys, I've put them on with their pike phalanx because um, I saw his mercenary Cappadocian cav getting too close to my units, and I'm chasing these Cappadocian cav with my Thorea spears as well. Now, meanwhile, my Royal Peltis Gen is getting some great shots off onto the rears of these uh, Eastern Cataphracts, and my th uh, last remaining Thorea spears is doing the same thing with his general. Even though my uh, my Thessalian cav are dying, uh, they've done their their job in that they've. Uh, pin down these Eastern Cataphracts and they're getting slaughtered by my Royal, uh, royal Peltas. But this is not looking good for me. Uh, he managed to get a rear charge with one of his extra Cappadocian Cav. I did turn around my Thorax Pikes, so, um, but what I should have done was move my, my Rhodian Slingers behind so that they would have been, uh, they would have been uh, taken the bait and they would have uh, charged straight onto my Pikes. But they haven't and uh, these guys instead of just, they're just moving down this line and obliterating my last few skirmishes. Meanwhile, his Eastern Archers have done an incredible job 
and uh, now I'm, you know, I don't have any shield protection now because um, his uh, axemen and his uh, Persian officers are getting too close. I've sent my royal peltas to attack these Cappadocian caps, so they should die very soon. And I also turned around my levy pikes just in time to catch his Persian hoplites, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. But this is going to be much bigger an issue. Um, his uh, royal cataphract gen is about to rear charge and slam my my levy pikes from the rear. That's that's going to be the end of those levy pikes. And the problem with pikes is once one if once you find one um, one fault in the line, then it's basically uh, you know it's game over for the rest of the pikes. Now his horse archers have got great positions onto the, onto my uh, royal peltas. I do have one uh, Thessalian cab which is pretty wounded but uh, should still be able to help out in this battle. And uh, meanwhile, my I'm reforming my levy pikes to put them into a more um, defensive formation kind of. And uh, just try and protect my flanks as much as possible. He is sending one Eastern Cataphract, which is going to get a nice flank charge onto my um, uh, Levy Pikes. But I have issued an attack order, and this is what's cool about Levy Pikes now, and Pikes in general. Uh, if you issue an attack order, it doesn't mean that they have to be uh, facing in one direction. They put some of their Pikes on to catch these Eastern Cataphracts, and that helped me out uh, a little bit. He's uh, made one giant blob here with his... Uh, uh, Eastern, uh, sorry, with his horse archers and his uh, Cappadocian cap, just trying to attack my general. And uh, I turned around my thorax spikes right at the last second. I think I think it was a bit too late. Um, but his Cappadocian cap seemed to have got a pretty decent charge off onto these guys. Um, but as for the rest of his army, it's just that it depends on how well his Eastern uh, archers do, and they've done an incredibly good job so far. Um, getting great shots onto my thorax spikes, uh, who are fleeing because I had to chase off one of his um, uh, axemen. I thought maybe I'd be able to get a good uh, uh, sneaky attack order on them, but it didn't work. His uh, Cappadocian cap have charged my uh, royal peltas, who are suffering now. They've suffered a lot of casualties, and uh, at this point, it really doesn't look like it's going to go in my favor. Um, I do have some some pretty uh, full, some full strength thorax pikemen left. But they're just going to be eating these arrows. Like, look at that. That's just concentrated fire. And he's, he just smashed one of my, my last uh, mercenary Cretan archers. And he's got five, well, three full strength units of Eastern archers. And um, those guys can be more than enough to kill off the last remaining troops that I have. Let's see how it goes, though. One of my Royal Peltas have put them on, uh, uh, I put, use the whip on them. A bit too late, I think. But anyways, my, with my other Royal Peltas gen, I'm getting a rear charge onto his Persian Hoplites. Meanwhile, they're going to charge my Thorax Pikes, whom I've, uh, um, who I've, I've, I've put in this direction. What I did was, uh, while, while I was facing off one of his uh, Axemen, in order to protect my flank, I, I put this one Thorax Pike in to face this side. And uh, that, was in, that was something that worked, I guess. But here he's just going to keep gangbanging my, my last remaining Thorax Pike unit. And um, I keep turning them around because they have to face the other... Uh, uh, unit because they're getting slaughtered on both sides, but you know that's that's just going to leave one side of them completely exposed. And there, there, there they go. They're routed now, and that's not going to look very good. I'm, with my last remaining troops, I'm going to try and form a quasi box or as much of a box as I can do. And um, I'm just going to leave the rest of my troops here. My my general should be, yeah. I mean, he's done really well, and he should be able to last for a bit longer. Um, but yeah, once this engagement is done, what I should have done, or what I should do now, is put my peltas right inside the middle of my pike box. He really can't have too much ammo at this point. Um, it looks like he does have a lot of ammo, but he can't possibly have much more left. But that's not the issue here. Um, my my pikemen have all routed my thorax pikes, even though they were uh, a lot of them still had a lot of men left. I think maybe it's just because he had a lot of ammo and. Um, he kept slaughtering them with arrows, but yeah, that's that's the end of this battle, basically, you guys. I've I've lost that. I think my my pike heavy army didn't really work out, and um, well played to Philippator. He's he's won this by a huge margin. Uh, taking a look at the builds, or sorry, taking a look at the kill stats, his uh, cavalry did a bul bulk of his uh, killing, but. You know, his Eastern Archers proved their worth. 123, 93, 121 kills on three of them. And uh, 34 and 40 on a couple more. But they've just, they, they single-handedly slaughtered my uh, uh, Rhodian Slingers, who could have been a big menace. And uh, they were getting, my Rhodian Slingers were getting great shots off onto his Horse Archers. So it was, you know, credit to him. He he took advantage of a, a, a of the situation in a couple of seconds. And, you know, immediately he killed off my Rhodian Slingers. Very good move by him. Um... His Royal Cataphracts and Eastern Cataphracts did really well, and so did his Mercenary Cappadocian Cap. These are really, really good units to, to take. They cost only something like 800, and they're very, very good units uh, for that price. 
in terms of my army, you can see that some of my uh, thorax uh, pikemen, well, thorax pikemen basically were a waste of money. They did get a few kills. Some of them got a few kills, but a lot of them just died for no reason. My Royal Peltist Gen did incredibly well. 247 kills on them, and, um, you know, they, they hardly suffered any casualties. But yeah, guys, that's the end of the first battle. Look out for the rest of the uh, three battles. Let's see if I can get my revenge in the next one. And uh, stay tuned for more. Peace.